All right, good deal. So, uh, so you want to know about uh, about Delta and what it's all about, right? So, I think uh, your statement was correct over there. So, if we're talking about uh, probability of in the money, then uh, that is one of the purposes of Delta. So, I'm, I'm just going to pick any option chain over here for. Let's just go with. Let's go with Moderna here, and we're looking at at the money 300 strike. Uh, it's currently trading at 304, so at the money would be 300 strike, and it has a delta of 57. So Doug, uh, 57. That what what that number tells me is that I have a 57 percent chance on November 12th for the 300 strike being in the money expiring in the money which is which is good that's that's half right so knowing what we know about delta we know that delta can can be anywhere from zero all the way to 100 right zero to 100 zero being uh you have you know pr pretty much no chance whatsoever of ending in the money right that's the probability of when the when the delta is zero and then you have a probability of 100%. That means you're already in the money and more than likely you will end up in the money. So let's let's look at that scenario. Uh, the 170 or the 165 strike right now has a delta of 98, right? That's telling me that more than likely by November 12th, uh, that strike will be in the money. So if I buy it at 165, I mean, at uh, 14,260, I'm not going to lose that. I'm not going to lose that money. Uh, that's the purpose of Delta, one of the purposes of Delta. And if we look at the chart, in fact, we can see that the last time that we were at 165 was pretty much uh, back in uh, May. So there's a pretty good chance that uh, this is true, uh, that uh, Moderna is not going to fall to 160. Uh, 165 170 that's what that delta is telling us but the other thing that delta is telling us is for every one dollar movement of the price of moderna every time it goes up by one dollar guess what right we we, we make a hundred bucks right when that delta is 98 we make a hundred dollars or 98 dollars whereas if we were at the money every time we move up by one dollar we make 57 dollars give or take Right now, uh, one of the other questions that I've been asked is once you select a strike, does that delta remain constant? And the answer is no, that delta moves, that delta increases and decreases based on several things. Uh, the number one thing that causes delta to change is the price of the underlying. So, if the price is increasing, obviously, this delta is going to increase with it because you're going further and further into the money right so this uh, uh this shaded area is going to be dropping basically moving towards this side you see that, you know as, as we increase the price of moderna from 304 going on to 310 315 and so on all of these now become in the money so the strike that you had bought at 300 is now in the money deep in the money and so its delta will obviously increase we might ask ourselves well can we actually calculate how much that movement is going to be the answer is yes there is another metric we rarely talk about and that uh, metric is called gamma right so what is gamma gamma is the rate of change of delta uh, big words over there but let's explain it so every time the price of uh, Moderna increases by one dollar two things happen the premium of the strike that we chose 2755 increases by 57 and also the Delta which was 57 increases by one so the Delta is now 58 you get that yes yes okay now is Delta all is 0 0.1 because it seems that all of them are 0 0.1, right? Delta is, I mean, gamma is, gamma all is 0 0.1? No, gamma is influenced by what's happening in the market because it is, it is a description or it is a metric that is driven by volatility, 
right? Implied volatility, you know, market changes, news, all of that good stuff. You might even say it's a kind of a fear index, uh, but not really. Uh, but it, it has more to do with, with volatility. So the more volatile the market, especially in the morning, then the higher the gamma and the higher the delta will change. That is why in the morning when you're, you're, when you're working with a, uh, with a stock like uh, SPX when it's moving in the morning, um, let me switch over here to SPX. I know you guys love SPX. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys just love. I mean, that's all I'm hearing. You know, you guys talk about. So SPX is great. Yeah. So you might, if if you buy an in the money strike or an at the money uh, call, I should say, and you're looking for one dollar movement, it might not even move one dollar for these two to hit uh, uh, to, to to for you to get that mark. And that's because gamma in the first 20 minutes of the day is super high and the delta you might even spike from 52 all the way to 90 right little known secret uh but i'm not teaching you how to do that <laughs> <laughs> not teaching you how to do that uh then your other question was about theta right theta so you wanted to know about theta uh theta is uh obviously time-based it means that uh, or it is a metric that measures how much the premium is going to decay every day and then on zero dte how much of that is going to decay every hour or every minute uh theta by the way works 24 7 right every day nights and weekends holidays all of that does not stop so if you buy if you buy something, uh, you know, buy SPX, the 4390 call for 1560, uh, and the price does not move at all or nothing else changes, it is going to decay by the amount of delta. So you can always add so, uh, amount of theta, I'm sorry, amount of theta, right? So let's uh, customize, let's go ahead and add theta over here. Now, do I care too much about theta? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, whoa, that's a really high theta. Look at that, three dollars and ninety-four. I, I, sh I probably should care. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should care. Uh, yeah, that's two DTE, man. That, yeah, then you should care. So you can see how this, this is important, right? Uh, and it is true because this actually decays very, very, very fast, and that's what we take advantage of when we are trading uh, credit spreads because we are counting on theta to decay the option prices so rapidly uh, especially after the first hour on uh, on a zero dte day to our advantage so for regular stocks regular equities and uh, that securities you know every day your premium is going to go down by the amount of theta right and then on zero dte day that decay is accelerated by the hour and that's why sometimes you might buy a uh, stock uh buy a call and the price is not changing and it's you know it just seems to be losing value that's that's theta killing it cool so in this case the um 4390 call mm -hmm. if nothing else happens within four hours my um within within the next two days uh it is going to lose uh three dollars and 95 cents every day so right. theta is expressed in a daily time frame right but on but on but on uh on, on 11 october on on that day it is going to accelerate that theta is going to accelerate very very high so this number will be higher than that got it yep so very cool hey welcome everyone uh this is kind of an impromptu thing it's open mic if you have a question go ahead and hit me with it we'll we'll see what we can do i have a question eddie morning hey what's up Bemi? hey this is hey. wonderful i'm so glad i was just looking randomly scrolling through i'm like <laughs> oh my gosh this is you know it's like christmas in october thank you you're welcome 
So my question is, I know you mentioned SPX before. So my question is about SPX yeah. um, and trading options on SPX. So my strategy is to do zero DTE yep. and like trade within like the first 30 to 45 minutes that the yep. market opens. Okay. That's my strategy. And that's what I'm trying to like really perfect. Yep. I think what I like, and then you said something interesting. I was, I was rewatching the last class where we talked about like vertical options mm -hmm. and you talked about looking at the futures and looking at the net change and using that to kind of think through, okay, if it, you know, if the net change is like a negative, then mm -hmm, possibly mm -hmm. the market could like open down. Yeah. So could you explain how do you refine trading like the, first, I know this is not for everyone, but this is kind of like what I want to be good at. How do you mm -hmm. refine trading your strategy? Um, how do you refine your strategy around trading the first 30 to 45 minutes of the market? I don't, I want to be able to be in and out in like an hour, an hour and a half. And I think that that first 30 minutes is a sweet spot. So do you have like any tips you could give in like, what are the things that you look for? Like I chart like the night before the 15 minute and the day, like what else should I be looking for in order to like make that strategy a little more um, successful? Okay. Well, it depends on what you're charting the night before. What exactly are you charting the night before? So I'm charting SPX the night ah, before. Okay. So I chart right. the 15 minute and yes. the daily chart just to see, okay, what, yeah. what are, what are some of the zones for mm -hmm. tomorrow? Got it. Got it. Got it. So yeah, that's a good strategy. You, you certainly want to chart on the daily uh, and that's important because that helps you understand, uh, depends on what you're trading. If you're trading spreads, that's important. If you're if you're trading to yes, spreads spreads okay so you're trying to sell premium on uh, on SPX now that remember what, well, remember when you when you're selling premium on SP actually on anything really you are trying to figure out where is price not going to go right that's the most important key to think about it's not where the price is going we you know we we can figure that out it's where it's not going to go so i start off by trade by uh identifying my support and resistance that's what i do right support and resistance so support is uh, what you guys probably call the buy zone so that is support meaning that uh price is uh, going to bounce off of 4278 most likely most likely and on the higher side uh you know that that's that seems like uh, one one sort of you know one part of resistance over here and another one up here. So I'm just going to draw some arbitrary lines up here, right? Uh, so 44.29 is what we saw in the last couple of days, and this is yesterday's candle, right? Yesterday's candle. We went up to a high of about 40 44.12 right 4412 that's not a zone i'm just marking that one just just for the heck of it so in your strategy you have to understand that with spx we create a lot of gaps right we create a lot of gaps so uh, you all familiar with gaps um thinking silence is yes yes <laughs> maybe <laughs> All right, so a gap a gap is also a resistance point, right? D did you all know that? No. You did not know? Anytime you have a gap, you've created resistance. It's a zone, right? It's a zone. Every time you have a gap, it's a zone. If nobody ever told you that, it's a zone, okay? Anytime you have a gap. So once we fill the gap, it's history. Don't think about it anymore. So if we have an unfilled gap, for example, this one has not been filled between 44.29 and 44.42, that is a zone. Do you see that? And why is it a zone? It's because we're going to try and fill that. The bottom of the gap is going to act as, as resistance for as long as the price is below 44.29. And if we were on top of that, 44.42 uh, would actually be support. So think of the gap as resistance and support. Here's another gap that we haven't filled. 44, sorry, 43.83 to 43.63. Once we hit that, we're going to challenge that. And the challenge will be trying to fill that gap. 
okay? That's, that's a zone. That's another zone. You always have to pay attention to these zones. So if you're selling a PCS uh, on Monday, if the, if, if, the, if the market momentum or the direction was going downwards, you want to pay attention to that gap and sell your PCS below 43.63, right? Below 43.63. In fact, on Friday, if you had a if you had a PCS below 43 or above 43.80, you should have been sweating, right? You should have been sweating, especially that last uh, that last 15 minutes. Did you all see that last 15 minutes yesterday? You guys didn't see, huh? I, I did. <laughs> you know what? Are you guys, what are you guys watching? You know, you guys are pro watching. Uh, uh let's see let me fix my let me fix my the market was moving so slow like the first most yeah. most of friday that i got it, tired after it, a while i know it was so slow until the end of the day you guys know what happened at the end of the day you have no idea what happened at the end of the day no 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 somebody bought some pressure bills an institution and uh they were like all right so this candle this candle had me this kind of had me change my shot yesterday. Uh, you seeing that candle? Which are you? Are you talking about the one with the very long wick? This one over here. Yeah, this one over here had me sweating bullets. Yeah, because my strike was at forty three eighty five, and I thought we were going to breach that, and. Uh, and so I, you know, I was busy, you know, activating, you know, the National Reserve to get into action to, to save me. But but uh, I think what it was doing, it was it was taking out all the stops, taking out all the stops. So why did I feel safe at 43.80 is because, let me go back here to the one day, is because my zone here was saying that, my gap was below 83 so i was i was i was i was actually playing with fire i shouldn't have been in here i should have been on the other side but when i got into my spread there was no premium so that is why when you're selling a spread don't play in the gap right be on the other side of the gap that's one scenario on the other side there's a gap at the very top so if you're doing a ccs you need to be squarely above 44.42 because this gap will likely be challenged. This this gap may be filled, right? May be filled. Uh, so preferably way above that. But then back to your question, what do I chat? What do I look for? So the ES, you mentioned the futures. This is the futures, right? ES is the futures. And I chat the futures very, very well. So what I do, well, the reason that I chart the futures is because they help guide resistance. So this is the 15 minute chart, right? 15 minute chart, and we can see that Friday resistance was approximately 43.75, 43.85, somewhere around here. And so we were thinking, or I was thinking that this was the point at which SPX would 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 uh, would uh, uh, go down to and remain above and true enough we stayed well above 43.85 this is 43.77 by the way on the es but on spx since there's a 10 point difference between es and spx this actually translates to 43.87 on spx so let me go back to the spx chart uh, what kind of watch list is this? I don't have a good watch list. Yeah, this is a better watch list. Uh, 4387. So you can see 40, we stayed pretty much above 4387 all day yesterday. Do you see that? Bemi, do you see that? Yes, yes. I do see yeah? that, yes. So, so that is why you have to watch the ES because uh, SPX follows what ES does, right? ES does what the Dow does. Okay, so here's a demonstration. Let me go ahead and add a study here. I'm going to add one of my favorite studies here that is uh, compare with uh, DJX. Oh, not that one. Sorry. 
Google studies, yes. Style, no, studies. Add a quick study, compare with, uh, that's probably in my life then. All right, I'm in paper trading over here, so I'm not really sure. Uh, you know what, let's hack this. Let's go and hack these. Uh... You guys know how to hack uh, studies? Nope. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, uh, stay with the. Uh... There we go. Okay. All right. I just hacked a study. What did I just do? I added the Dow Jones uh, chat to my SPX chat. Right, just to demonstrate that we move the same way, or SPX moves exactly the same way that the Dow Jones is moving. Right, on the left side are the Dow Jones numbers, on the right side are the SPX numbers. So if I zoom in over here on the 15 minute, I can see that every time that the Dow Jones went down, SPX went down. So I use these very, very, you know religiously to, sh to show what direction the market is moving rather than flipping back and forth to another chart for Dow Jones I just overlay it over here in my live I have it better set up but on paper trading I don't but this is just a good example hope that answers your question Bemi yes so if I can add a follow-up Eddie so because I have the Dow Jones open I have the VIX open so I guess which moves first. So if the if the Dow is going down, is it safe to assume that SPX is going to go down as well? Does Dow yep. start going? Okay. Mm -hmm. Dow moves and first. Then, go ahead. Okay. And then how do you overlay the VIX? Because if you're looking at everything on like the 15 minute chart, mm -hmm. I think I'm trying to, and I don't know if this is futile. So I draw my, I'm, I'm trying to look at, okay, if I see Dow going this way and the VIX going this way, yeah. Therefore, the SPX could potentially go this way or the other. Is that the way to think about it? Or, uh, you're, th um, you're, th you're thinking about too many things. Uh, okay. Yeah, you think too many things. Uh, look at the VIX in the morning, forget about it, okay? And then look at the Dow the rest of the day. Look at the Dow the rest of the day. But do pay occasional attention to the VIX. So VIX, when it is below 20, uh, tells us that premium prices are going to be a little lower also that we are trending upwards right and we're trending upwards that is the spx if the vix is rising then more than likely spx and the dow is falling but let's also understand what is the vix the vix is a fear index it's a it's an index that measures the sentiment of the trading public if traders are feeling a little anxious a little you know ang you know angst about uh, what what the market conditions are they start selling right they get out of positions they're moving from equities and those kind of securities they're moving into safer things like bonds and uh, treasury bills that is that is what's happening on a macroeconomic level and it happens so fast quickly and it also happens in millions of dollars and that is why that number that measurement uh is so important because it shows what direction the market is moving. Remember, it's not you and I who move the market. It's the big institutions. And if the big institutions are afraid, they're they are, they are anxious about some sort of policy statement that the president is going to make or the Fed is going to announce or some law is going to be passed, whatever, or some catastrophic thing, then that influences what they do. Right. So the VIX is uh, something that uh, obviously... Uh, makes a difference so cool question all right thank you eddie I'm, sure. i can't wait to get this recording because i have to rewatch this was that that was like really helpful thank you you're welcome all right hi, all right. hi eddie this is latrice your favorite yeah. annoying person <laughs> <laughs> what's going on what's going on so can you just repeat that you said when the vix is below zero then the premiums are low uh below 20 below 20 is the premiums yeah. are low okay perfect I'm yeah. Taking notes. Yeah. So if you if you're buying if you're buying uh, calls and puts, uh, you you want to buy it when uh, when the VIX is a little lower. Or if you're buying debit spreads, uh, you want to do that when the VIX is a little lower. General volatility. Cool. 
Harvey. Awesome, awesome. Cool. All right, let's go another few more minutes. Uh, this is open mic. Any question is game. Any question is game. Hey, Eddie. It's... Hey, what's up, Nicole? Hey, hey. Um, I'm late, so this question may have may have already been asked. So I apologize if it's a duplicate in advance. Mm -hmm. Um, whenever we're doing debit spreads, and once I've identified, you know, like what I want my take profit to be, yep. once I put that in Thinkorswim, and I'll navigate back over to the chart, mm -hmm. I'll notice that when I'm looking at the chart, because you know how the chart will, it'll have that indicator or that line in there that tells you, okay, based upon your take profit, this is where price needs to reach. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed that it seems like I'm being way too aggressive because the price point seems to be extremely far away from the current price. Is there a way that when I'm figuring out what my take profit should be, I can see what that value equates to on the chart from like a current price perspective? Uh, th that number, that, that icon that you normally see on the chart is actually deceptive. It's not very accurate. So the more accurate way to, to think about it is to calculate what your expected uh, profit is and then go with that go with the chat so just and you're talking about debit spreads right is that yes. what you're talking you're yes. talking about debit spreads meaning that yes. you're paying to get into it yes you're paying yes. to get into it all right so yes. give me an example so we can walk through it okay um okay i'm on my phone i'm not on my computer but that's okay let me think about it so yep. like let's just say um what what's okay, the ticker looks, okay it looks like you're on spy right uh, no, to... SPX, but you you tell me what uh, symbol to go to. I will, okay. I will Amazon. Hard. Amazon. All right. Amazon is, uh, yeah, we can go to Amazon. Okay. And okay. Give, me, give me a strike. Okay. And um, shoot, I really need to be on my computer. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can make it bigger on my phone. Okay. So, okay. So Amazon. So like, let's just say current price right now is at 32.8862. Yep. So yep. let's just say that... Um, I think that that price may fall on mm -hmm. Monday and mm -hmm. let's just say that I pick a strike that's at um, 32, 75, right? This is without charting, but like, let's just say I pretended and, and I charted and, and I, I said, okay, price is going to be, I'm picking strikes at 3275 and 3270. Okay. So I'll pick my strikes, right? And I'll, and then I'll put in my, I'll automatically put in my closing order. Yep. And let's just say I want to walk away because I chose a $5 um, because my width between my spreads is $5. Yeah. Then let's just say that I want to, I have a take profit order of $8. What's what expiration are you thinking? Yeah. Um, I've typically been doing like, um, like, a, okay. Amazon. Let me see. Okay. I'd probably do the 13 day, the October 22nd. Okay. All right. Weekly. So, okay. So you said uh, you want to do uh uh, a debit spread, a vertical. Vertical, debit spread. Let me fix yeah. some of these things here. Customize. Hang on a second. Take that out. Take that out. All right. So vertical, and you're thinking 32. 30, I'm just, yeah, 32.75, 32 32.70. Okay, that one. Right. Okay, so we're going to buy, we're going to, it's going to cost us 220. Yep. Yep, yep. And All then. Right. Okay, and we, we confirm it, we exit it, mm -hmm. but then I put in my take profit order at $8. Let's do that. Okay. Tell us how you got to $8. Um, $8 was just... Obituary? That's my daily goal. Like, that's that's what I want to make off of that spread. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Is that too aggressive? That's yeah. what I want to make off of that spread. You, can, you oh, can't, you know, you, no, you, I can't you, do you can't, that. You, you can't make $8 I, on that. No, I can't do that because it's a $5 width. Um, so, like, yep. let's just say, let's just say um, four fifty. dollars my bad. Four, four and a half, okay. That's, that's still aggressive. Uh-huh. 
Okay. So then maybe that's my problem. Maybe I'm being too aggressive. Okay. Okay. But, but, but we'll go with aggressive. I mean, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to agree. I, I like a little, you know, rough action. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> TMI. Okay. No <laughs> confirming sin. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, when it comes to the market, I'm talking about the market. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so I'm good with all those values. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any stop loss? Um, I have not been putting them in. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the next question. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so, so, so no stop loss. You, you live, man. That's called living la vida rocker. Okay, so confirm and send, right? Yes. All right, I'm done. And now you want to go to the chat and you want to see these values over here. Your 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 question is about these two three little things over here, right? Yes, correct. Ah, yes. Yeah, these are fake. Uh, but not really. They are an approximation of what the system thinks that your target is going to be met. So your question is very good. It's valid. And for the longest time, I thought I had to go all the way to this point in order to get filled. And then the price would have to come all the way down here to get filled. Now, notice right. that the price here is 34.12. And the current price is 32.88. That that should immediately tell you that you know these things are baloney because I can get filled tomorrow morning and the price doesn't have to be thirty four twelve. You with me? Right. Yes. And, yes. And 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 consequently, I don't have to. The price doesn't have to come to thirty three hundred in order for me to be filled uh, on the on this on the when I'm getting rid of it, because the spread is actually thirty two seventy thirty two seventy five. Right. Yep. I'm tracking. So you don't have to worry too much about these. This is just an indication. And sometimes you might even see it move up and down. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. I wouldn't worry okay. too much about that. Uh, what I do want to correct is that the position of your spread is out of work. Okay. It is way out of work because if you if the current price is 88 and you're looking for 75, 70, I'm just leaving out the 32. Uh, that is too close. You need to be at least 15 to 20 points away from the current price. Why is that? Uh, because you want this to thing to work. You're trying to get rid of it before it reaches maturity. So remember, okay. even if it goes through your spread, even if price falls to 3260, the value of your spread will not have its maximum value. Two things have to happen in order for it to happen, for that to happen. Thing number one, it has to go through the spread achieved thing number two today has to be uh october 22nd at expiration that is when that happens that maximum profit takes place so you cannot achieve that for as long as that has not happened so in order for for you to even get 30 to 50 percent value increase of your debit spread you need that amount of space for it to travel to make it attractive to the next dude who's going to buy it from you. You with me? Mm, I'm just trying to think that through. Uh, yep. So give yourself some space between current price and, and, and the debit spread and also give yourself some more time. So October 22 is kind of short, but yeah, it, it, it would work. Um, and there's no good reason really to choose October 22 because these things are so cheap, right? Why October 22? I'd go the full 45 to 90 days. You're going okay. long. Yeah, okay. so, so go 45 to 90 days even when you're doing debit spreads. Um, and guaranteed, you're not going to be spending a, a whole lot more. The 3270, 32.75 on November 26, which is 48 days away from today, is actually going to cost you uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, $2.85, right? Yeah. right. Yeah, so, so I wouldn't worry about that date. Just go 45 to 90 days. Yeah, I'm just still trying to think through the, the 15 to to fifteen to 20 points. I'm still just, just trying to think that through, like like why it needs to be that far away. That's just uh, the only piece that's not connecting with me. Are, are you having success the way you're doing it right now? Um. I am, but it's taking a really long time. Like I'm holding it like two, three weeks before it gets picked up. Yeah. You try 15 days, you'll get out in two or three days. 
You mean 15 points away from current price? Yeah. Trust Eddie. <laughs> Check it out. Two or three days versus 15 days. You obviously have a lot of patience. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. All right. Let's see. We've got a few more minutes before I'm out of here. Who else got a question? Hey, what's up, Kanisha? Good to see you. Hello, hello. Hey, hey. All right. All right, guys. Uh, since there are no... I do have a question, so Trace again. Okay, what's up? So um, I just want to recap what you're saying. You're saying that when you get in a debit spread or just all spreads that you want to make sure you're 15 points away from current price. That's the way I do debit spreads. Yes. Yes. Debit spreads. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Credit spreads. You want to be even further away. Debit spreads. You need, you need a bit of space. And that's between current price and the long leg. Remember with debit spreads, the long leg is closer to your uh, current price. Okay. And and Eddie, just to finish that thought, yeah. then you need to be fifteen to twenty points away because uh, you you're trying to get that spread to increase in value to about fifty percent, and so that makes it still attractive to. For one, you get a cheaper price. Second, you are still going to achieve that thirty to fifty percent profit uh, target, and it's going to be easier to get rid of it because it is still attractive to the next trader. Okay. So think about it. If you are going to buy that 3270, 75, and the price is already past 3270, remember this is falling, it's a put debit spread. Would that be of any interest to you? No, because it's too far away. I can get it lower at current Not price. Not only that, no, no, it's, it's already breached the spread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's no longer attractive. It, there's no money in it. Uh, additionally, when you have uh, a bit of time, uh, you have to think of the risk that you're that you're taking on. That that spread could lose value also. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Hey Eddie, just a quick question: Where yeah. would the link to this be posted? Uh I'll think about it. YouTube. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be on YouTube. I'll post a link to you guys. Cool. Thank you. This is You're super welcome. helpful. All right. All right. It's a uh, Doug maybe. Hey, Eddie. Create the create link. Hey. Hey, uh, it's Marlon. I uh, dropped for a minute. I'm driving. I had some uh, uh, bad connection. You talked about uh, calling out the National Guard, National Reserves uh, to defend. Uh, uh, can you talk through your defensive strategies uh, quickly? I know you got to go. Uh, my defensive strategy depends on what's burning. <laughs> it depends on what's burning. Uh, well, my first defensive strategy obviously is a stop loss. That's why I was giving Nicole a hard time over here. She does not uh, work with a stop loss. But that is your first defense. Uh, my first defense strategy is always have a stop loss. No matter how sure I am about the trade, it could go against me. And since that uh, I do not have a very high tolerance for pain, especially when it comes to the market, I like to minimize those losses uh, extremely. So stop loss is your first defense defense number two is once you identify that the trade is going badly uh your you, your next thing should be try and get out of it right that's the best way get out of, get out of the trade cut the trade take the loss when it you know it's still early if you wait for a very long time your choices of recovery go worse especially when we're talking about uh credit spreads Right. More specifically about credit spreads, I do not recommend having a stop loss greater than 50% of the width of the spread. 
right? Let me let me explain that. If the width of your spread is five, for example, in SBX, we commonly have a five point wide spread. You should not be in the business of having a stop loss greater than two dollars and fifty cents, right? Two dollars and fifty cents is the is fifty percent of the value of your spread. Maximum loss on uh, on five hundred dollars for one spread is is 500 minus or whatever premium you receive but think about it why give up more than half of that right don't you know that it cannot recover once you get to the halfway point so the spread will almost certainly never recover once you get past that it's, it's too high too close to the action so that's uh, number two get out if you can uh defensive strategy number three sometimes i roll a credit spread uh, the time to roll is when the short leg has not been breached. So if you have a spread, let me go over here to SPX. Uh, and this will probably be the last question here. Uh, let's say I have a 43.95, 4400 call and I'm seeing that price is now at 43.91. Before it hits 43.95, I need to have exited this trade or rolled it. Once it hits 43.95, my choices disappear. I can no longer roll it for a credit. I can only roll it for a debit. Still a good thing, still okay, but not ideal. So you want to make sure that you're monitoring your trade. In fact, when you're 10 points, uh, within 10 points of your short leg, the one that you sold, that is when your antenna should go up and, uh, and you're like, all right, what do I do here? I either cut the trade, uh, roll the trade, uh, yeah, those are the two choices, right? Or or sell something on the other side. Do, you know, there's some other advanced strategies that you could do, but uh, to keep it simple, uh, roll the trade or cut the trade, right? Rolling, uh, make sure that you roll it either two or three expirations out, and also make sure that you get a credit, even if it is something like 15, 20 cents, you can still do that. Uh, that could have the effect of two things. There's two ways that that trade could go. Either you're delaying the pain, the inevitable pain of a, of a loss, or you are going to come out clean, right? I've done this uh, several times. Uh, most of the time I've come out clean, and I think one or two times I have, you know, just made, made a good on loss. On a credit spread, never, ever, ever take max loss, ever. Do not take max loss. Do not take max loss. Uh, never let a trade expire because you are annoyed or something. I've done that before, been there, done that. Don't do it. It's painful, it's bad. Uh, it's, it's bad, you know? it, it, bad things come out of it. That max loss is really, really difficult to recover. It takes a very, very long time. So, you know, you wonder, or well, people ask me when they see the 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 pl or the risk profile of a credit spread why would anybody do that why would you risk 500 dollars just to get 65 dollars right it's ridiculous any businessman will tell you come on man go do something else so the reason we do that is because of the higher probability of profit anytime that you have a higher probability of profit you also have a higher risk and so with credit spreads, the way to win is pick the right direction, learn how to read the charts, right? And then also utilize that 1x rule, the stop loss rule. So for me, my rule is 1x. So if I get 65 cents of credit, my stop loss is going to be $1.30. That's 1x. You with me? Right? 1.5x is going to be, you know, one, uh, one, 130 plus 65. What is that? Uh... A dollar ninety-five, and probably that's as much as I would go. I wouldn't even go to the three X. Three X is ridiculous, right? It means you have no clue what you're doing in the market. You probably shouldn't be doing it. So don't do it. Uh, stop loss on a credit spread very, very important uh, because these things multiply so much. You know, you guys are doing three, four, five spreads. That probably should be the most. Even people with a lot of money don't do more than five or ten spreads. And that's just because of the risk profile for spreads. What I would suggest is do it small, do it often, right? Make small wins, get your three, four hundred dollars, five hundred bucks, you know, three times a week. Be happy with it, uh, and then grow with that.
So. Thank you. All right. Good deal. Awesome, guys. Hey, hey thanks for joining me on these uh, short, impromptu uh, get together. Uh, there was nothing special about it. By the way, there is no VIP class today in case. Uh, in case you were not looking, so. All right, guys. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, right. Eddie. This was really yeah. good. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. All right. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.